What's happening, folks? How are y'all doing? Welcome. It is, can't believe it. It's actually Friday, March 29th, 2024. My name is John Ting. I practice immigration law in the United States, and I'm also your host here at greencardguys.tv. Answer some questions. So, late night show. I don't do this often, but I've been doing it a couple times so far this past week, really mostly because the immigration fees are going up. April 1st, unless I hear about other news about um, an injunction, okay? But so far, there has been a lawsuit to try to stop the fees increase, but I haven't heard so far um, that it actually worked quite yet. So we'll keep you updated. I'm going to pull up my other uh, my email inbox because I am a part of a American Immigration Lawyers Association. So let me check that out real quick in the meantime. But how y'all doing tonight? Alrighty. If you're wondering why is there a lawsuit uh, to try to stop the fee increase, um, not that you would care, I guess, in a way, but um, specific, specifically, USCIS is trying to increase or recover cost of asylum processing through other means, through other applications, through, for example, like H1B registration costs $10. For registration only, it's like step number one. And that just closed up earlier this week, seven days ago, or March 25th. And so this past year, right, this past week, it's $10. But next year, I believe it's at like 200 or 219 something like that, 220 And that's one of the fees that's increased to recover the cost for asylum case processing. So I can understand why they're doing that, but there's been a lawsuit trying to stop it because of that, basically that reason. So that'll be kind of interesting if that actually gets stopped ultimately because of that. Um, but I do see the government side on that one. But anyway, happy to answer your questions. Drop your question in the chat box. Take advantage of my time because I will try to be on for 30 minutes and then I got to go to sleep. <clears throat> Let's see here. But I do, uh, in the meantime, if I'm not able to answer your questions as in-depth as you prefer or just I don't answer your question at all, it's not intentional. I just usually get a lot of questions um, overall. Uh, so the best way to get in contact with us is through the link in the bio page, okay? Whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. I know it's wild. There's been so many different platforms. But I'll try my best to answer your question tonight, of course. Um, try to answer as succinctly as possible. So let's get to it. All righty. Welcome. Thanks for joining. My name is John Ting. And let's, let's see here. H96 official have evidence from your country. I don't know what your situation is. Can you share a little bit more? Puma, what's going on? Do you need... Your previous 601A, now that you got denied and need 601 for fraud. Well, I mean, it will be helpful to know what you wrote in your application, especially if you wrote um, a letter, a hardship letter for your 601A. It could be used for your 601. But did you get, but you got that denied. So sounds like you just need um, another attorney possibly if you didn't have one before puma on tiktok um especially to talk about that alleged fraud but i mean to answer your question again it's not necessarily that you need the prior application to file the new application uh but it definitely will require some strategy session on that okay puma so if you're interested Click the link on the bio page, okay, right up there on your platform, or it might pop up down below. And then, um, by the way, after you click that link, uh, it takes you to another page. Uh, and just answer a few questions, like I think five questions. We really try to keep it as short as possible for you, especially knowing if you're going to do it on your phone. And then, um, and after you click submit, it's going to redirect you to a payment page. I don't like doing this, but we do have to charge 
this amount. It's really a hold fee. And uh, a lot of y'all don't mind, but I mean, it's, I mean, uh, what do you call that? Like a reservation at a hotel. Like you, you, you check in the hotel. I know it's weird, but you check into a hotel. It's like a hold, right? You put your credit card on file. That's essentially what it is because we've had a couple bad apples. Some people schedule and then they don't show up. So it's pretty defeating, especially when our mission is helping people live and work in America legally. Okay. So if you show up, we'll refund it. Just ask us. All righty. Thanks for tuning in. All righty. Well, I will try to answer questions, of course. I mean, I will answer questions on all platforms possible. So I will get to you soon. Hey, Akosua, good to see you again. You spoke to uh, Alexa. Great. Uh, I'll check if she scheduled you, but I'm assuming she did schedule you for a time. Uh, Ama, can someone adjust status within with three misdemeanors, one drop, and two deferred? Uh, yeah, it's possible. Um, it's not so much the number of arrests necessarily, but I mean that's a good start. One one got dismissed. And two deferred, but deferred doesn't deferred. I always associate I, I without looking at documentation, is that even if someone signs a plea bargain, a plea deal, it's still technically a conviction for immigration purposes. Okay. I mean, that's just what the policy manual says, but so we'll have to take a look uh, and make sure. All righty. But still possible to get residency. H96 official error on your passport. You came to the U.S. and uh, married, divorced, filed for VAWA. It's pending. Can I fix the mistake on your passport? Um, I don't. I don't know if your marital status matters in that sense. But that sounds like that's more about your country. So I think maybe what your concern is. Because you have an immigration case pending that you're wondering if that will prevent you from re like changing the name on your passport. or re I mean, it's an error on your passport, so that's up to your country. You know what I mean? Your embassy, okay, where hopefully it's not difficult for you to update your passport. But that I wouldn't think USCIS has any concern because, number one, it's not even you changing your name. It's an error. Okay. Thank you for asking, though. All right, let's see. Let's hop on to another platform here, to YouTube. Hi, Aditha. Welcome back. I think I recognize your name. Uh, I'm doing great. How are you? We'll see how it goes tonight. Usually usually I'm good for 30 minutes and I started crashing uh, when it's a late night show. <clears throat> your dad applied for U visa during application 21. Due to COVID, you sent the FD fingerprint cards. Okay, yeah, you're sounds like you're abroad. And when you uh, recently inquired, they said there's no update of fingerprints on file. Okay, so I would just and so you emailed it to them. Okay, uh, they said your case is in pending consideration, and your dad got bona fide consideration already. Okay, great, that's good. Should you do anything else with your case? It's been three years. Um, if in case there's no fingerprint update, does the applicant believe abandoned? Um, sounds like they didn't, with respect to you, uh, Adita, sounds like they didn't answer your question about you specifically as derivative. Um, but they said they didn't receive it. Then I'll just go send it again. Okay. And uh, f fingerprint cards, yeah. It just You would think there's a fast, like an easier process for... So we're talking about right now where Aditha's talking about a U visa case. She's a derivative and she's abroad outside the United States. And I, her dad, yeah, her dad is in the United States, a victim of a crime, cooperated with law enforcement and was able to get the U visa certification signed, filed it. Sounds like several years ago by now, in 21 at least, 2021. And so now that he got the bona fide, um, what do you call receipt notice, um, a notice that he can apply for work permit. So that's the next thing for your data, Dita. But in terms of you as a derivative, 
being outside the United States. And derivative either typically means as a spouse, your spouse, or a child, adult child, or um, a minor, okay? So um, so we've helped with cases like that before, and I, I always thought that that was the, the sending and, um, and tracking the fingerprints and all that is ridiculous with the government. So I would probably just, I would just send it again because you don't want to wait several more years and then find out that there's a problem with that. Which, I mean, you already found out there is a problem, so send it again anyway. All right, good luck to you. All righty. Um, ben Greeny on Instagram, what's up? How difficult is the removal of conditions on CR1 for spouses who do not live together? Okay, so, um, so you got CR1. I mean, you have CR1 right now, it sounds like, because you're trying to remove conditions. I don't, I don't know if it's right now or later, but, huh? You don't live together. What's up? I uh, and I'm assuming you did live together before because you got, you got the CR one. But what happened? You of course don't share that here, but um, you don't have to. But let's chat about it. That's what an attorney would want to know, so we can understand. So if you need to write an affidavit, a letter, or declaration, um, we can explain that. Especially if you want to try to have your interview waived, which typically it happens for remove conditions, unless they see evidence that you're not living together. Okay. But it's possible. We just need to know your reason. It's not a it's not like a rubber stamp situation. Definitely not for some 51. Um BN Greeny. Sorry for mispronouncing your Instagram name, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, the strategy sessions are not default with me. Okay, if you if you want the um, strategy session at no cost to you, other than of course the five dollar hold fee, very complicated. I got I I had that feeling, um, and it happens. Like especially if there's like job, you know, changing jobs and things like that, and you know layoffs and. Yeah, whatnot. I've heard, I've had, I've known friends um, that have that kind of situation. So, anyways, I'm sure there's a way to explain it. We just have to tell the truth. Okay. That's generally the default. Um, let's see. But yeah, if you want to speak with me directly, there is a way higher fee than this amount. Oh, ooh, did I say it out loud earlier? I'm not supposed to. I'm, I don't want to get banned by a platform. The one that does this action. Um, but anyway, you uh, you can go to our website, greencardguys.com. I usually don't, I mean, I don't mind at all. It's my team telling me I can't do that. Otherwise, it's going to get really, really booked up for me. So I need to sleep at some point. Uh, but depending, depending on the situation, I can try to hop in on a meeting as a surprise um, but I can't I can't be everywhere because you know, for example, I was just in court in Dallas. I flew to Dallas Wednesday night, late night. Then I and I usually fly later at night because look, traffic in Houston is just not worth it to try to fight it. So I took the eight eight PM central flight to Dallas Wednesday night, drove like 30 minutes to an hour in the morning, Thursday morning to court. And then got the dismissal that we needed, which is great. And then had breakfast for my with my brother, and then which is nice. And then I flew back to Houston, uh, like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. So all that within less than twenty four hours. So as you can anticipate, you know, I, this is hard to keep track. So, but I'm happy. I'm happy to very fortunate to have a team, premier attorneys that I train. Train my team almost literally every day. They're probably tired of it. So, anyways, so I don't know how uh, some other attorneys that are like one themselves and like one or two other assistants. I, I mean, I used to be like that, but now we got what fifteen team members now. Very very fortunate. Alrighty. All right, back on TikTok here. Oh, all right on TikTok. Oh, like it 
scrolled it all the way down. I got to scroll or. Okay, here we go. Trying to go in order. By the way, especially folks on TikTok, y'all tend to do this, but you don't have to copy and paste. Um, Lady C, can you move to Sweden with a pending asylum in the United States? No, I mean, as far as I know, you're supposed to stay here while your asylum is still pending. And I know it's ridiculous because, you know, when you, I would think, I think it's reasonable to think that, to believe that when you apply for asylum in any country, that your interview to process your asylum claim would happen like at least in less than a year. But no, in the United States, it could take four years, seven years. It's nuts, totally nuts. So we sue the government. We sue USCIS for those situations. And like... Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Got a dismissal from court. Uh, so the judge didn't have to deal with it. Or the government attorney. Okay, so that moved on. That's moving back to USCIS. But to your question directly, as far as I understand, Lady C, I'm sorry. I don't I don't believe so. Unless you're going to give up your claim. I don't think your claim will continue if you leave the United States at all. I could be wrong. I don't. I, I'm not an expert on asylum. But we can refer you to someone if you want our referrals for anything. But especially immigration, we can we can provide you those referrals quicker than any other thing. But um, but if like, hey, you need a civil lawyer or a criminal defense attorney in your area, you let us know a little bit of the, about the situation in your county or jurisdiction where you live, essentially, and then we can provide you a referral for the area. Some people we know. And some people we don't know, right? But we just want to point you in the right direction. So you just need to do your due, due diligence. All righty. Hey, Akasua, you attach your N-400 letter. Yeah, I did take a look at that letter, by the way, Akasua. You told her you want to speak with me. So um, you do have to answer questions by my team, okay? If they ask you questions, I know it. some of y'all might think it's annoying, whatnot, and I'm not saying that you, were, you thought that... Um, Akasua, but like in general, there have been time, there have been a few times where uh, some people don't want to answer questions, but it really helps expedite the process, uh, as you can tell, because we do get a lot of increase. So, uh, but yeah, I did take a look at yours, by the way. We definitely need to talk. <clears throat> All righty. Ali. Can you get a lost I needed for from year 2000? Have you gone to the CBP website? Okay. I Well, the year 2000. I can't remember exactly the year that U.S. Um, I mean, Custom Border and Protection, CBP, changed it to electronic, basically online, internet, with I-94. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Let me see. CBP. Let me see if that tells me when they started that. But there is a website um, for the I-94 to be found. So if you just Google search I-94 CBP, it'll, it's probably should be the first website. And you, it's got to be a .gov. Want to make sure. Anytime you're trying to get to a government website, make sure the URL link is dot gov at the end okay yeah it used to be on paper so back in 2000 for you ali on tiktok should have been on paper uh, but yeah check online first they actually have an faq on here it says what if you don't find it online and it says they give you some troubleshooting on like Asking, did you enter your first and last name the same way as it appears in your passport? And that's the thing, folks. Some of the information, so ask like your online, ask your for your passport number. And so especially something to keep in mind because your pass, like if you renewed your passport, you may you could have accidentally put in like your most like your current passport as opposed to the old one when you enter. So that's something to keep in mind. Um 
But worst case scenario, there is a USCIS form to request a copy of the I-94. I can't remember what that is off the top of my head. Let me see here. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty expensive. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah. I-102. Looks like that's what it is. Let's see how much that cost. 102. Um, and that's one of those things that you would think is a rubber stamp situation, but it doesn't come out that quickly. Online, USCS.gov says $445. Okay. So hopefully that helps you out, uh, Ali. I don't know why on YouTube it doesn't. It's too bright here, but on my other phone, my phone, that's okay, right? And I mean, on TikTok, you can't, it's, it's like backwards. Instagram, it's backwards, right? All righty. Let me hop over to here. Hey, Kimberly, you got a question? All right. Kimberly, on YouTube, if someone has an existing U.S. tourist visa and enters the U.S., uh, and soon after, during her stay in the U.S., he applies for um f1 what will happen to his u.s tourist visa i mean it doesn't like um you can switch back and forth so let's say like his visa in the passport says valid for 10 years it doesn't go away but of course keep in mind that i mean i think most people know this but just to make sure like the, even though the visa itself like on the passport says valid for 10 years that doesn't mean that person can stay in the united states for 10 years but it doesn't like if you change to a student visa or any other non-immigrant visa timely, that doesn't mean the prior one, like the tourist visa, goes away completely. Um, but there are times where people have to switch back and forth um, depending on the situation. Like if someone had H-1B for work visa but then got laid off or something, then you want to switch back to some like tourist visa. Um I don't know if that answers your question, Kimberly. Hopefully it does. All righty. Uh, Puma, you said you did. You have your attorney, but she failed you. I'm sorry to hear that. We hear that a lot in general, uh, especially about customer service. I don't know why, folks, but, you know, you pay for your service. I'm not trying to... Um, just like any service, right? Like... You pay a plumber. You want a plumber to update you on what's going on with your toilet. Um, you pay a dentist. You want to know like what's going on with your teeth, right? So, but some lawyers, there's a lot of great attorneys. I'm friends with them. Um, I don't know any bad attorneys personally, fortunately, but I hear a lot of stories from y'all um, and whoever calls in and schedules a meeting with us. But I look forward to talking with you. Okay, Puma. All right, Felipe. Um, someone crashed into into you. I guess through a car. You, someone crashed into you by a person running from police and maybe DUI. You think I could qualify for U visa? Um, a little doubtful, based on the information you shared so far. First thing is, did you get a police report? And you were you were listed as a victim on the police report. If not, then that's probably a no go. But the key thing is that to know is that just because police got involved, it's it's more so because it was an emergency, right? But that doesn't mean that what he that person did to you um, was a was a crime that they're going to charge. Like the district attorney is going to charge that person, right? It's could be just referred to as a an accident case civilly in civil court, but not in the criminal court. So it has to be considered a crime. That is a critical piece, other than, of course, cooperating with police. Shauna Best, you have a friend that she filed for her child and the case was approved, but heard nothing further. Why is that? Well, 
you're the friend, so you might not have all the info, but sounds like you're pretty good friends with the person. The fact that you're asking this question for your friend, um, but you know, the if you're if your friend's talking about receiving the notice of action, the seven ninety seven form or paper notice, the seven ninety seven C. By the way, is this, it's the same number for every single USCS notice. But if you're talking about I, mean, I don't know what case means in this situation. Is I-130, which form is it? Is it, If it's a 485, I mean, typically to get the resident card in the mail, one to five weeks, okay, to kind of give you an idea. But I don't know what you mean by case, first of all. Sorry. Attorneys always have a, typically always answer a question with a question ultimately. And especially here in the live show, because it's a, it's a, you know, you can only type in so much information here. All righty. What's going on? I get the feeling like my energy is going down right now. Um, how are y'all doing tonight? Um, okay, on Instagram, Izara. Hello, I want 30 petition still pending after six years. Oh, your family preference, aren't you? I hope your family preference are not something else then. Because if you're definitely immediate relative and spending six years, we got to talk about filing a lawsuit. So who's your sponsor? Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I, Zara, on Instagram. Who's your sponsor? Is that a resident spouse or is that a like a sibling? If it's a sibling, U.S. citizen sibling, that's that's normal, six years. And so some of y'all might think, well, hey, yeah, you have a family member who sponsors you like a sibling, U.S. citizen, or even um, your spouse or parent who's a resident. And, uh, yeah, it's normal to take a long time. In fact, it's like, you, yeah, like I typically wouldn't, I wouldn't file a lawsuit for that kind of situation. And reason is, like, you would think, like, oh, petitions should be so easy. Like, why, why does it take so long? Because you're proving a family relationship, right? That should be rubber stamped. <laughs> but, you know, government doesn't want to care what I think, you know, especially USCIS. I mean, I got a lot of opinions to make things faster. But it it actually, especially if um, you have children or spouse, uh, no, especially with children situation, because the Child Status Protection Act, the way the mathematical formula works you actually to include your children if they were to age out become uh or older than 21 you actually want your petition to be pending longer and ultimately the big picture wise is that your priority date on the visa bulletin is not has not reached anyway so but if it has or if it's about to then we gotta definitely talk and file a lawsuit okay yeah exactly exactly so um Alrighty. See, so, yeah, that's not too bad. Answering a very fairly complex situation in less than 60 seconds. So if you appreciate that, folks, if you don't mind, go ahead and give us a follow on your perspective platform. And you know what to do. Tap or like, hit subscribe, follow. Uh, then you get notification of a future show if you have more questions. Like I randomly did tonight. Okay. All right, Abraham. Uh, did I miss a prior comment? All right, Abraham on YouTube. If you were approved, okay, hypothetically, when you were a child, I went 30. Can you now file 45 as an adult? Uh, that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be a tough one, Abraham, because typically... I mean, first, it depends where the I-130 was supposed to be sent or where it did get sent. Because if you were abroad or if the petition that was filed many years ago mentioned that it's going to be adjustment of status or consular, because even though you're filing an adjustment now or potentially file adjustment, where did the old case go? Okay. And so typically you got one year, especially if it's abroad. And it also depends on the family relationship, which I suspect, Abraham, you're talking about your dad 
so yeah, a lot, a lot to follow up with. It's not, fortunately, not a black and white answer, not a quick answer in that sense. Hey, Habib on uh, on YouTube. Good evening. You commend me for this live chat. Yeah, seriously. I, um, happy to answer questions. Uh, th consider you might wonder, like, why the hell am I doing this late at night? Number one. USCS fees are going up April 1st, okay? It's likely just going to happen because Congress authorizes USA, USCIS to do this every two years, and it hasn't increased since President Obama. President Trump tried to increase it, and that got stopped by a lawsuit, okay? Um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to still continue, regardless of the current lawsuit. Um, even though I, I do hope it stops the increase, but I don't, I don't think it will. <laughs> um, but to your actual question alrighty uh, your 751 was extended for 4 years yep that's typical these days that's pretty much automatic uh, then you're married in 2018 you got your CR in 2019 can you file for naturalization Two, 2000, so let's just make an assumption January 1st 2019 which is probably not but January 1st 2019 uh, uh yeah you can file it so even though you're pen so folks even if you're wondering what is the way the tip to get one way to get the uh or well, the best way to get your 751 that's pending for a long time to be processed a little faster is to file for naturalization at the time that you're eligible all right so it's either three year or five year so habib i'm also assuming you're still married to that same person because who sponsored you because you didn't mention anything about divorced or separated. And then, um, so yeah, it's already past three years for you then. Okay. Habib. Um, now the kicker here and why you may want to consider hiring attorneys because for this is because, um, you got attorney will make sure that case file will get, will get put together because if you go to interview on the N 400, in a, become a citizen and then uscs officer interview officer is like hey by the way you got this i see you have a 71 but we don't have that package here you didn't tell us and they're gonna just send you back like reschedule you until they get the new the old file so yeah that'd be annoying because the whole point of that is to speed up your case all righty hopefully that was helpful <clears throat> How y'all doing tonight? Thanks for joining the show. My name is John Ting. My um, what did I say? My law firm name is Ting Law Group. Let's see. And uh, yeah, we're live here through GreenCardGuys.tv. So if you're if you're on TikTok, Instagram, and you're wondering, okay, what is John sharing on the screen? I'm not sharing anything right now on the screen, but. You can go to greencardguys.tv to check in through YouTube. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. 1313 on TikTok. Uh, hi. VAWA Advanced Pro can travel. Um, if you get Advanced Pro, yes, you can travel. Since that has nothing to do but like re asylum, so you can travel anywhere. Um, but by the way, folks, some of y'all don't know this, but events pro is great to have. Okay. You got to have it approved. First of all, before you travel, preferably before you buy your flight, because events pro, even though you apply for it, unless on January 1st, doesn't mean it's going to come like next week or the next month or five months later. So it can be freaking annoying to predict. It's, there's just really no way to predict when. Any application is going to get approved or get to the next stage. I mean, we can, I can only share based on our case experience and talk with my colleagues and friends, but that's not a guarantee for your case, you know. So don't don't make that mistake of like buying a flight or a cruise or something, enjoying your life, which is great. You should do that, but unless you think money's not a problem to you, then that's cool. But um, but if you're gonna buy a flight or something like that in advance before your advanced parole is approved then maybe make sure to pay a little extra for the what do you call that like the option so that you could change your flight or cancel okay 
Uh, because I hate if you financially get stuck with something, you just can't even go. <clears throat> just something practical that probably an, any other immigration to lawyer might not tell you. Because it doesn't cross their mind. All right, Arlene, what's up? <clears throat> On Facebook, your question is, uh, uh, why didn't you receive any response from USCIS three weeks ago after submitting your 765? Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, three weeks, I wouldn't say is like, a maximum time but i mean that's the average time that uscs should uh mail you the 765 if if you mailed it okay but depending on depending on the situation 765 can be filed online i'm pretty sure yeah we do that sometimes if you're wondering why your attorney might not like filing online it's because the system sucks it's not as easy as you might think like you for us if we have to send a code like i don't know five numbers or something to our client and then um they enter it in they look in the system and say like oh tlg team law group why is some information like out of order it's like yo we put it in the correct way it's happens almost like twice a year this happens so at least for us so it's kind of kind of annoying um, and we definitely don't want our clients thinking that we did something wrong, which with immigration, clerical errors, typically is not an issue, but it's more about deadlines. Deadlines is the most important thing. So we track that. We, we like to send things. We set in the calendar, the deadline, and then definitely our aim is to file it at least one minimum one to two weeks before. So we set a deadline for that as well. All righty. Anonymous on TikTok, your question. Um, your mother passed away. Um, my condolences to you. She filed I want thirty for your stepdad, but it's declined. What can you do? Do you, do you know why I was de denied? I, I think you mean denied. What is why is that? Um, but how how long ago did she pass away? Because your stepdad has up to two years to. Uh, file I three sixty. There, there are certain situations where the I three, I one thirty is supposed to convert to I three sixty, but they would need to know about the passing. So, of your mother, you otherwise USCS wouldn't know about it. Zigzag, hello. Your wife has PD. How can she get green card? Do you mean PD prosecutorial discretion, or I need to know a lot more than that? Like, are you the sponsor of the spouse, or when you say PD, does that mean your case with her case was dismissed from court? Have you filed I one thirty? Have you fi has she filed four eighty five? A lot of questions. So send us a DM, or the best, the best thing really is. Uh, Go to a bio link or profile, click on the link right below my profile picture, and uh, just answer a few questions. I think it's like five, six questions, and it, it should even have a, I think the last question is like you upload a document. If you got denied or whoever is filling this out, you got denied or you got an RFE request for evidence or notice of intent denied, NOID, then uh, upload that because that will save a lot of time in terms of going back and forth. <clears throat> Because uh, our our team will be able to review review it before the strategy session, okay. Which, by the way, if and then after that you can submit, click submit. It's going to redirect you to another website to pay this amount. Okay, I can't say it aloud. I don't even want to do it, but our team has really re has requested it. So we went through it uh, the past couple of weeks. People uh, still appreciate our uh, guidance, which we're thankful for. Uh, but we have to start doing it. It's more think of it as like a hotel reservation hold. Okay. So you show up, we refund it. Just ask us. Okay. Um, what's it called? But yeah, we've had to do that because a couple people, a couple bad apples didn't show up. And that, you know, a little disheartening considering our mission has helped people live and work in America legally. All righty. 
So show up and we re re refund it. If you don't show up, then we keep the that amount of dollars, which is less than a cup of coffee these days. Pretty sure it's less. I don't mean I don't go out to buy coffee unless my wife tells me to, but that's pretty rare. Um, let's see here. Mac Dinho, can you apply for your brother uh, and sister as a U.S. citizen? Absolutely, you can. Uh, but you just have to know the process, right? Step, they can't, I mean, they can live here, but I know a lot of people who overstay their visa and they have a sibling, they file for them as a citizen and they have a bad assumption, incorrect assumption that they can, that they can easily get status here in America through a sibling. It's going to be very difficult unless you qualify for a waiver um, or an exception, but that's really rare, okay? If you need to know more, then welcome. Click the bio page, the link, and schedule a session with us. Which, by the way, folks, that first meeting we you have with our, our team, um, it's not with an attorney, okay? It's not with one of our attorneys. The first meeting you have is one of our CARES team members who are not attorneys, but they're trained to collect, ask certain information, and then they're going to pre-qualify you to meet with one of our attorneys at no cost to you. So hopefully that process makes sense to you. Um, we used to do it by phone call, but there's just a lot. There's a lot. So we just prefer that it's just a meeting, like a video meeting, and hey, you don't want to be on camera? It's cool. Just turn off the camera. But I just more structured because we do get a lot of requests. All right, let me switch over here to to uh, YouTube. Hey, uh, Mr. Chung, is that your last name, Chung? Uh, on YouTube, you completed your biometric appointment October 13th last year. Okay, so that's what... Um, Five months. You're still waiting on your 45 and I went 30. Did you get your work permit yet? At least did you file 765? So yeah, I mean it's, it's normal to be over eight months in general. Your wife's an American. Okay, great. Yeah, so your immediate relative, but you need to. Um, I hope you file the 765 application as well. Okay. Because you didn't mention you got a work permit or not, so uh, which is fine. But you need to. Uh, but yeah, eight months is eight months is not a problem. Okay, you got EAD, thank God, and the travel permit. All right, that's good. Hopefully, you got your social number. I know some people have complained about that recently, or the past year. Like sometimes they don't get the social number within you know to thirty days. Which if people don't, if you all get the work permit but didn't get the social number. In this past 30 days, just schedule a meeting or just show up to the SSA office. Hopefully, there's one near you. Um, oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Chung, or yeah, so eight months, eight months doesn't actually necessarily also mean that your interview is going to be scheduled. You could still have an uh, interview waived. Okay. So, um, if you haven't, if you did not provide your medical exam before, sealed in an envelope provided by the you know medical clinic, um, then get ready for that RFE, okay? Request for evidence. And if you get a letter in the mail, but it's not, it does not literally say request for evidence. Then, and it says more like a courtesy notice. Then that means it likely will mean in the content of that letter will say get the medical exam, but bring it to the interview. So that's the key indication whether your interview is going to be waived or not. Arlene, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, C9. Zacharias, uh, good evening. You have a firm enough case to start. Can you, for, can you the first few steps? I guess you're asking me what are the first few steps? A firm enough case for what? What did you file? Okay, glad you have... Submit the medical. Thank God. You don't deal with that. Because some people said that after they provide a medical back to USCIS months later, it's still like five months later. So that's nuts. 
used to have H1B. Okay, so you're familiar with the process. Well, glad you don't have to deal with the H1B anymore. <clears throat> hey, Zach on uh, Facebook, good to see you. All righty. <clears throat> Michelle on TikTok, how long does it take uh, after been approval? 42B. Well, what did you do? Did you do the steps after? You're supposed to schedule info pass appointment with USCIS if you mean you got approved for 42B in court. So there's several steps with that. And congratulations. 42B, that's amazing. Cancellation removal, wonderful. If I could give you like a high five, awesome. That's not easy. Definitely not easy. I'm curious, did you have a lawyer for that? And what flags are you what flags do you have um on your little your name? I think I recognize the one in the middle, but um anyway. Can a per okay, JS eleven thirty one. Uh, can a person with a green card apply for son in the U.S. over 20 years old? Well, you didn't say over 21, so it sounds like under 21. Um, yeah, I was a parent. Uh, it sounds like it because you say son, so mm -hmm, yeah. Sure can. There's a lot to it, like in the future thinking. If your son gets married, if you become a U.S. citizen, there's a lot to go over. So I realize things, those kind of scenarios, if you're wondering, um, DM us and ask for a webinar in your question or topic because we're, we're going to try to do webinars that's, you know, it goes into a certain topic a little bit more in depth. Um, so not necessarily like how we do the live show here. Uh, so send us a DM or a comment on, you know, YouTube, Facebook under, under the show notes, I guess is what you call it. And uh, we'll put add it to the list. Best, especially Facebook and YouTube. Though Facebook, you can send a message. I, think, I guess you call it on was that Messenger, but YouTube, y'all need to get it together because there's not an easy way to uh, to what do you call that? Send a message directly. Alrighty, Stephanie, you're so annoying. Why? What happened? The company you use has had your complicated app since 320 has it. Oh, shoot. What do you mean complicated app? Why is it complicated? And what, what company? So you didn't hire a law firm? We got to talk about that, Stephanie. Why you hired a... You've been on a show before. I recognize your picture. As it mailed it, see, that's why mm -hmm, y'all not hiring a law firm. And that's the thing. Not every lawyer, though, to cut you some slack, though, not every lawyer company is going to be the same in terms of client service. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, what is it today? March 30th? Shoot, they better mail that sucker tonight. Or, or yeah, it's already midnight in Texas, so. Oh, my goodness. I wonder, can they FedEx that to Sunday? Good luck to you, okay, Stephanie? Um, let's see. Oops, didn't mean to skip around here. Uh, FBI Love Sosa. That's quite a name. I don't know exactly what all that means. Um. Uh, Sosa, your last name? Sosa, I think of like Sammy Sosa, the baseball player. You're a GC holder. You're a classy misdemeanor for disorderly conduct pending. A good, good thing is that, well, your, your question is pending. How does that affect citizenship? Affects it a lot. You got to wait. Don't, don't apply for N400. You have to, if you're still married to, if we got status through marriage, then you have a three-year rule. Then you have a three-year rule of a good moral character but that three years has to be after Dep well, first of all depending on the outcome of your case but let's say it, it ends up being like a plea deal okay you agree to the elements of the crime which 
I just generally don't recommend that. You need to talk to a criminal defense attorney first. So I'm not going to make that assumption right now if you have one or not. But let's say the agreement between both of y'all is to sign a plea deal. Then you have probation, typically. All right. So you, we do not recommend that you apply for N-400 during probation. It's because some people get confused. Like, when does that three-year good moral character period start? Um, and we say it's, or not we say, based on a policy manual, it's best or not best. It's just it is what it is. And that is after the three-year period after probation ends, not the date that you signed the plea deal, okay? So hopefully that helps. Three years after you sign, um, I mean, your probation ends, okay? They said they will be dismissed if you do consulting. Yeah, I know. They all say that. But it doesn't matter dismissed or not in terms of when you're when this person is not a U.S. citizen. It does not matter. If you sign a plea deal... It's still a conviction for immigration purposes. Um, but yeah, the crime, that crime itself, classy misdemeanor is not necessarily an issue. It's more about the timing. Okay. And you can Google search N400 criminal bar, and there's two types of bars. Okay. Uh, well, I guess you're on YouTube, so it's easier for me to share with you, actually. Let me see if I can share it real quick. There we go. Share my screen. All right, y'all, thanks for your patience. Again, thank you so much for joining the show. My name is John Ting. I practice immigration law in the United States, helping you solve your immigration problem or maybe prevent that problem from happening in the first place because there's a crap ton of problems here. Okay. Um, all right. So, what was your name? FBI. Okay. Love Sosa. So, you're looking, we're looking at the um, USCS policy manual, volume 12. This is the conditional bars for X in during a statutory period. So, either the three or five year rule. And you can see there's a bunch of uh, different offenses here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great information here. I can't remember exactly where it says about waiting. Uh, okay. Anyways, hopefully this page is helpful to you. All right. Uh, I got to get to the next question. All righty. Barry, Barry Fofana, you applied for your husband and he had an interview and it stayed on administrative processing for four years. Holy smokes. Did you file a lawsuit? Barry Fofana on TikTok? Did you file a lawsuit? Send us a DM, okay? Fill out a form. Uh, it's like five, six questions. It'll be worth it to you. Uh, my goodness, four years, that's ridiculous. Well, hopefully, hopefully you don't need our service, but um, it sounds like he's still waiting. H96 official, your date of birth instead of 2005, it's actually 2002. How did, how did that get wrong? Are you talking about on your passport? Can you change it? If you're talking about your passport, again, okay, Pretty sure I answered your question. I mean, it's the same answer. I don't see how that will affect your immigration status. If you're talking about your passport. And even if you're talking about the USCIS application and you somehow got it wrong or your attorney got it wrong, then you can update it, okay? Especially if an interview, you can update it. And you got to be obviously tell them, like, what happened? They're going to they're gonna wonder, how did you get your birth year wrong? So you should have a... Hopefully, you have a pretty good answer to that. Because two and five are not that close. They're two numbers away. On the on the one with the keypad. Well, unless unless you're talking about the keypad on the right side. Look at my keyboard here. 
five is right above the two. So I don't know. That could be a legit reason. Situation there. I know, silly, but things to consider when you got to explain yourself. Try to think outside the box here. All right, baby girl, Luna. 485 uh, case saying uh, says it's being actively reviewed after interview. How long does that usually take? Um. Just in general, 485 after interview from the date. Sometimes we get an uh, update that day, next day, but I would say up to 30 days. If it's taking longer than 30 days, it's like, it's not to say that your case is bad or going to get denied, but um, at that point, one to two months after and not, they didn't ask you for like a medical exam to, for you to send in later or anything or any particular other evidence then it's like it's almost as if they potentially got it um out of their workflow i wouldn't say lost but out of their workflow okay um but unfortunately you can't sue the government after one or two months that's not that's still too early in that kind of scenario okay we wait at least six months in that kind of situation Uh, so hopefully you haven't waited that. Hopefully it hasn't been more than 30 days for you. What's up? What's up? Good to see y'all. Okay, let me hop over here. Okay, I don't think I answered your question on YouTube. Odun, Odunayo, Emmanuel, when you filed I-130 the second time because the first one was denied, does USCIS do background? I think you mean background check again? Yeah, they typically do, but I wonder why your I-130 was denied the first time. All right, folks, if you get denied the first time, I really hope you hire an attorney the second time, okay? Because um, let's put it this way. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but anytime we ask, you know, after you submit an inquiry with our team or call us and we ask you, why were you denied and you don't know, that's a pretty good sign you need to hire an attorney because it is on a notice. And I know there's a lot of information on the denial letter, the notice, but yeah, that's a pretty good sign you need to hire a lawyer, okay? Um, so you better start saving some money because securing your legal, legal status in America, some of y'all think it's a what, uh, what do you call that? A cakewalk? But it depends on the facts. For some people, it might be, but not for everyone. All right. Let me flip back here. By the way, thanks for the follow. Thanks for the sharing. And thanks for all your questions. On TikTok, it shows 99 plus. But I know some of y'all copy and pasting. Um, so please try not, try not to do that, okay? I know y'all get the urge to do that. There's just a lot of questions. I only have so much breath to share and mental capacity at 12.30 in the morning. And y'all y'all on Instagram are shy. What's up? Anonymous, please tell you what your stepdad can do. Your mother is deceased, but she applied for your dad. I want 30 now denied. I don't know if you heard my earlier comment. Maybe you did, but your stepdad has up to two years to um, file the I through 60. Okay, so get in contact with our office and we'll we'll check the timing. And we'll also check if even if the timing is accurate uh, or still available in that sense for your dad to uh, file I through 60, that it, in general can still be done. Yes, Emmanuel, happy to help. Okay, Bamba V on YouTube. You're denied divorce. You been denied for divorce decree. The officer denied you. You don't know about this divorce certificate, and now USCIS asked you to appeal. USCIS does not. First of all, USCIS does not ask you to appeal. They just let you know that you have the opportunity to file an appeal, which is if it's with USCIS, it's not really an appeal. Um, it's a, something called motion to reopen or reconsider on a form called I-290B. And not every application is uh, able to do that. 
So, but just generally speaking, without looking at any facts or documents here, most of the time we recommend to just refile the case in general and not file a 290B motion to reconsider or motion to reopen, aka appeal. Okay. Just because there is no, if you look at USCS processing timetable online on USCS.gov, the drop down menu for the form number, 290B is not on it. So it's even more difficult to hold them accountable or submit inquiry for that. We're happy to take a look, okay? Um, but you gotta, bam, but you gotta go to a link. You're on YouTube, so you can go to the link on uh, my about page, I think they call it, or right below our description box. You should have the link. Arlene, yeah, I, I don't dare drink coffee right now at this hour, but yeah, thanks for the energy boost. Appreciate it. Uh, what my recommendation on your situation? Let me scroll up your situation. What's up, folks? If you're just now joining, um, welcome to the show. My name is John Ting. What in the world? All right, what's up on TikTok? My live will end in 46 seconds on TikTok. They want me to complete a verification. Oh, there we go. I got to drag a puzzle piece into this verification. Okay. Okay, guys. I thought I was in freaking like Space Center, NASA Space Center. It's going to be okay here on TikTok. Whew. That was coming in quick. All right. There you go. I got my energy boost right there, Arlene. Okay, so I remember your situation was the receipt notice situation. You're, yeah, I mean, I'll still wait, Arlene. I will still wait two more weeks at least, and then if that if no, still no receipt notice, then um, then submit inquiry online. Okay, USCS.gov. I think that's your main concern. Did you file it with? So you you likely filed it with your um, four eighty five and nine one thirty. I suspect since you said C nine. I know I memorized some of the category codes, not all of them. It's too many. All righty. Okay. Ooh, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, Hey, someone said hello from Mexico. Um, hello from Houston, Texas for me. Good. By the way, we do have a physical office that I go to. I know some people think that, uh, that what's it called? That uh, everyone on TikTok or whatnot or social media does not have an office and virtual. We're all virtual lawyers. I do have some team members that work remotely, but we do have a physical office. So, hey, even if you're in California, New York, it's all good. Come on down, hang out, go get some grub. It's like a lot of good food in Houston. All right. Um, Okay, you were recently you recently paid for your green card. It's been 100 days. It's still not delivered. Okay, so you did the you were consulate processing. I uh, suspect you did the ELL, ELIS webpage to pay at 220. Yeah, it's frustrating. There's no. Um, they say you could submit an inquiry. You could try, but it's a slow process. And I think I think that I believe I'm just making a safe assumption here. Just understanding how the government, U.S. government works. They likely subcontracted out the green card production, producing the actual resident status. I just get that feeling. So uh, it's very unfortunate because it's probably no accountability on saying, telling the contractor, hey, hurry the hell up. If you understand that, please hit the like button or tap the screen because it, you know, even the US military subcontract out. That's ridiculous. It's for a reason, accountability. They don't want to hold they or liability. They don't want to have liability. Uh, Akosua. 
Yeah, you were disappointed when uh, Alexa called and told you the process. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just the way how we do it. That's how we do it efficiently. Otherwise, I'll be a tired. I'll be so tired. But for yours, if you're still on Akasua, happy to jump in. But my team has to. My t- my team member is going to be the one that starts that conversation, not me. Um, Moy, what is after biometrics? Uh, receiving your card, your work permit, if that's what you filed or whatnot. But biometrics essentially is their USCIS opportunity to um, check your criminal history. Uh, Puma asks, what's RFV annoyed? Uh, you Google it. Well, I can tell you quickly here. Request for evidence is the RFE and annoyed, NOID, notice of intent deny. That's the government saying uh, you got like a sliver of chance so to overturn our decision. Or they didn't, they didn't make a decision yet, but to overturn it. All right, folks, I got to get going. It is late, all right? You all have a good one. Good night. You all know what to do. Um, if you want a more in-depth answer, please schedule a session with my team, and uh, we'll, our te- legal team will take a look. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Good night.